Hey guys, this is Jules with the Dowdy Art Center, and today I'm going to show you how to make a cranky. It's an old storytelling form, long before TV, but it's kind of like video. Basically, you're going to draw on a scroll, and then we're going to put the scroll inside of this cranky box we're going to make, and you turn your scroll to tell a story. We'll get back to this story later. So to start off, we're going to need a box. So I have here an Amazon box, but you can really use anything. Um, you can go larger or smaller, it depends on how large you want your cranky to be. So what we're going to do first is take off all of the tape and labels on our box. Okay, so I decided to leave the bottom of my box taped because it's going to be the base of my theater. But if you already undid it, you can just tape it up again. Okay, so first things first, we're going to cut out the entrance of our theater. You're going to want to use the flat side of the box, not one that has all of these panels, to make the front of your theater. So what we're going to do is go in about an inch and a half, two inches, on every side and make another square inside of this box. I measured in one and a half inches on all sides of the box, and now I'm going to connect my markings to create our inside theta. Okay. Okay, so now I've marked the front of my theater, and what we're going to want to do is cut out this square. Again, you're going to use scissors or a box cutter, and be careful. Parental supervision would be very helpful. So I'm going to use this box cutter. I'm just going to follow my lines, always cutting away from myself. So the next step is we're going to cut off the back of our box so that we can have our hands inside our box to work. And also, if you want to illuminate your cranky, you can shine light from behind onto your cranky screen. So for this, again, scissors or box cutter, and be careful. So I'm just going to cut out the entirety of this back square. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the top of my theater box. So this is my box, so I cut the back off. I'm going to cut the top here so that it's about two inches all the way across. So I'm going to cut all three of these panels so that they're about two inches wide. Okay, so this is what the top of my box should look like. And I'm going to tape these, tape all of these together. Okay, then we're going to cut our sides as well. So we're going to cut this to be about two inches. And again, the size will vary based on how big your box is. So I cut the sides of my box, and I left a little rim here of about half an inch just because I think it adds more stability to our theater. Okay, so the next step is not necessary, but if you have any black or brown paint, we're going to paint our whole cranky. Black. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Now our cranky box theater is painted. So eventually we're going to have a scroll that is wound on two sticks that we twist here, <laughs> but before we get there, we're going to go through some steps. So first we're going to talk about the sticks that are going to need to be on each side of this. So you can really use anything. Basically we're looking for a long cylinder. So if you have any wooden dowels or a wooden spoon or even can cut up a hanger. Uh, that would work. But what I'm going to show you is I think the most accessible. So all you're going to need is two pencils or two pens. So I'm going to just use two pens. And because one of my pens doesn't fit all the way through, I'm going to tape it to the back of another one. So what we can do is we can tape the actual points of the pens so that they don't make a mess for us. So I'm just going to tape up the point of the pen. And that way you don't get any pen on your hands or on wherever your cranky box is sitting. 
And then I'm going to take the two flat ends of my pens and tape them together. I'm going to want to wind this pretty tight and reinforce it because it's going to be pretty crucial in our cranky. And there you have it. So I've got another set of pens here. I'm going to do the same. Okay, so I have my two homing dowels and now we're going to put them inside our cranky theater. So what we're going to need to do is put a hole in the top and the bottom. I'm going to make my hole an inch in from the front and an inch in from the side. And I'm going to put it in the same place on the other side as well. Two holes on top and two holes on the bottom. Again, an inch from the front and an inch from the side. Basically, we want our dolls to be hidden behind this side of the theater. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm using a pen, is just poke a hole through the cardboard. But if you're using something like a spoon or something of that sort, you want to make sure the hole you're creating isn't larger than the thickness of your dowel because we want it to fit in nice and snug. So I'm just going to use my pen to go straight through with this cardboard. Might need some parental supervision here. And then I'm going to make a hole on this side. So I made my two top holes and I'm going to go to the bottom and make my bottom holes. So if I measured correctly, all these should line up. So now I have my holes on the bottom and on the top. So my dowel should go through let's see, both of these holes. So this is just a test because we still have to create our scroll, but we just want to make sure that our dowels fit. So eventually we're going to spin these dowels so that our story moves across our cranky theater. But first, we have to make our story. And that involves making our scroll. So you can take these out now. This is just a test. So now onto our scroll. For this, we basically are going to need a long piece of paper. If you have any big sheets of paper, this would be ideal to use. Or you can just use normal copy paper. And then you can tape multiple sheets together using clear, using some clear tape to create a long scroll. So it needs to be a little bit smaller than the width of our cranky. So I have my long scroll here. I taped some paper together, and it's a little bit smaller than the width of my cranky. So what I'm going to do is tape it down so I can work with it. Because <laughs> it's rolling up on me, so I'm going to tape it down, just so it's easier to work with. Okay, so here's my scroll. So this is where we're going to be telling our story. I think the best stories to tell in a cranky are ones that either involve a journey, or the change over time. So we're gonna be making a several different scenes and we're gonna make transitions between those scenes. So each scene needs to be about the length of our cranky. So to start off, we're gonna want our introduction page. Use my actual cranky to measure how, how much space I need for each scene. So I just measured one cranky. And then I'm gonna do the same, another cranky, Another cranky, another cranky, so on. I'm going to start by using only pencil, but then we can go over it with marker or paint or whatever we want. I'm going to make a cranky that's not, that is also kind of a shadow box, so I'm going to use a sharpie. So I'm going to start with pencil and start mapping out my story. It's going to take some logistics and planning, so if you want to sketch out your ideas on a separate sheet of paper, I suggest that. So here's my sketched out timeline. I'll give you a little closer look. Okay, so here's my beginning stage. So my story is going to be called The Metamorphosis, and it's going to follow a caterpillar as it transforms into a butterfly. So it's going to start with my happy little caterpillar, and it's going to be eating leaves. So it would be helpful while creating your story to have a motif that repeats. For example, it could be something like hearts or stars, and it will help in the transitions from scene to scene. So my motif is going to be leaves. And here are some leaves that have, they've been eaten through with all these holes. And then one day, it's going to turn into a cocoon. And then continuing, and still there's leaves that have been eaten. And then it turns into a butterfly. And then I have a final end scene with flowers. Those are going to be flowers. <laughs> now I'm going to start mapping out my plan on my real scroll. Again, all in pencil. Take your time. 
Okay, so I finished the first round of my scroll. It's all in pencil. So this is my plan, and I'm going to go over this with Sharpie. All right, and now I've finished coloring my cranky scroll in with Sharpie. It only took a couple Sharpies. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to tape our story on our scroll. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is take a piece of tape that's a little bit shorter than the length of my scroll and I'm going to tape it onto the back side of my scroll so that the sticky part is facing up and I want half the tape to be on the scroll and half the tape to be off the scroll you might need some help with this part I'm going to take my homemade dowel or whatever it is I'm using and we're going to tape the scroll right onto it we're going to tape it from about an inch and a half up. So I'm just going to put it down and then roll the tape around it. And what we can even do is take another piece of tape and put it on the top now. So as you can see, it's taped onto my dowel. So now what we're going to do is tape it to the other side, but we want to make sure that this length, whatever it is, is exactly the same. So I'm going to get out my roller and measure it. So now that we've erased all of our lines and we've put our scroll on our dowels, it's time to roll up our scroll. So I'm going to start at the end of my scroll and I'm going to roll under so that the top is always visible. If it starts to get off center, we're going to want to push it back towards center. And I'm rolling each of my dowels at like the same exact speed. So now what we're going to do is put our dowels in our box. So I'm going to put the top part in first because it's the longer part. Again, like I said, the most difficult part. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our rubber bands. Here you can use ponytails, whatever, and we're going to put them on the top and the bottom so that our dowels stick in place. So I'm going to start with my bottom. So I'm not going to have my scroll touch the bottom. It's going to be a little bit up and it's not going to touch the top. So that way our dowels will stay in place. So on the back here you can see that my scroll really loosened. So what I'm going to do is twist this. Which way am I twisting it? To twisting it to the side, to the far side. So to me, right now it's to my left. So it's actually tightening the scroll from the inside. So now our scroll is nice and taut again. And now we're ready to perform. So to perform, we're going to just turn our dowels in the same direction. If you want to go backwards, and you can always draw your story so there's a backwards and a forwards, you're going to turn in the opposite direction. So one way, and the other way. Okay, so you can always illuminate your story from the back using a simple phone flashlight. But so you guys can see better, I'm going to front light it. I'm going to tell my story now. This is the story of the metamorphosis. It starts in a forest, a very lush forest. And it begins with a caterpillar. This caterpillar loved to eat and enjoyed finding new friends in the forest. They love the forest, they love the green, they love seeing the world and new things that would come each day. They ate many, many leaves. They ate until they couldn't eat anymore and would just bask out in the sun. Many days passed in their life, each different. But then one day, something really different happened. They formed a cocoon and they went into hibernation. While they were in hibernation, they didn't do anything. They didn't see the outside world. They were closed in for days and days and days and days. They could barely remember what the forest was like. What did the leaves taste like? Would they ever see leaves again? But they knew inside something good was coming and not to be afraid. This time was called the metamorphosis.
Then one day, something very special happened. The flowers were blooming, and from their cocoon, they emerged as a beautiful butterfly. And the sun shined as bright as it did on the days when the forest was new. And the flowers tasted just as good as the leaves. And the sun rose every day as it did before. And there were new things to see and explore. And this life was worth the wait. That's my story. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cranky tutorial. And if you make a cranky of your own, please share it with us. This is Jules signing off with Dowardy Art Center.